Hello, my name is Piask, and you're listening to 89FM, The Radio Rock. Fala, galera, beleza? Eu sou o Wendel Corrêa e hoje eu vou conversar com a Bior, que é a atração do Primavera Sound São Paulo. Ela toca no dia 5 de novembro, a 89, é a rádio oficial do Primavera Sound São Paulo. Ela vai falar sobre isso, claro, sobre o Brasil, sobre o novo álbum que ela acabou de lançar, chamado Fósfora. Tudo isso com exclusividade para a Rádio Rock. A câmera dela vai estar tá desligada, mas o que é legal é o conteúdo nesse bate-papo exclusivo com a Bjork para a Rádio Rock. Hi, how are you? Very good. Where are you now? I am in Iceland. And talking about the new album that is coming up, congrats for that, for Sora. Thank you very much. You say each album always starts with a feeling that you try to shape into sound. And this time on the earth, you're digging my feeling on the ground that became for Sora. How was the process of writing and recording this album? Well, I think because we were in uh, in pandemic, so I was like many, many people now are all coming with books and films and albums that, you know, they did that they had time to do now. Um, uh, so I think I also enjoyed this very much to be here for two years without even going to the airport. So. There was a lot more time to land and to shoot down routes and to to kind of relax and, and to meet, hang out with friends and go to the local cafe and and cook for each other and relax. So this kind of energy is quite good for music writing, because if you are long in one place, you you um, you you end up coming with some sort of a answer to the space you are in. Um, sometimes when you are touring and you're going from place to place to place to place to place to place, to place you don't have time to land and, and to write a song, you know, or to react to the place because you're going to the next place before you can even react. So so this is perfect for uh, musicians. And I really enjoyed I I actually allowed myself uh, to write slower than I normally do. You know, I would I would meet with the engineer I was working with maybe only like twice a week or something. I mean, it wasn't planned. Uh, it was more very spontaneous, which is also a luxury. Uh, but, it, it, you know, you normally when I'm working, I will work maybe every day or, or, or not every day, but five days a week. Uh, or be doing lo like a lot of other things, you know, like touring or being in airports or... or uh, you know, just a lot of other stuff. And now all I was doing was just uh, being a human being more and being reminded to my connections with friends and family and loved ones. And then maybe just writing music maybe twice a week or something uh, for just a few hours. So I think in this sense, it was uh, more relaxed and more uh, what the songs that came out of it, I think, had more deeper roots and deeper like uh, uh, yeah they weren't like rushed through you know and and I had also time to give each song what it wants like for example songs like free fall they started maybe with being you know a, a woodwind song and then and then in the end I waited and then in the end I was like come on this is a string song you know Don't be so so stuck in your concept. Just give the song what it needs. And so I think I think the album benefits from these moments where I had a lot more time and I was a lot more relaxed when I made the decisions. And and what do you usually come first? Lyrics or melody? Or both? Um I think for me it's more the music. Uh the melody comes first. Um Uh, more often, yes. Sometimes a lyric and everything will come at the same time. It's not often for me, uh, but um, but yes, overall the melody always comes first for me. And Fosor is a word you made up, the feminine of Fosor, that means digger, delver, ditcher. How do you develop this name and why is the name of the album? It's also the name of a track of of the album. Yeah, I felt this was a good word that describes sort of what happens to all of us seven billion people who are together in the pandemic. Uh, 
you know, just being in one place for two years and not moving, um, it it is sort of you dig yourself into the ground and and you sort of are just with very few people a lot. So it's it's more you're more sort of compressed or solid as a human being. And uh, yeah, I I I I wanted to find a feminine word for you know the it means the digger or or the one who digs into the ground um uh, and uh yeah i first was thinking about the word fossorial which is more like about all uh, animals who have um like lizards or or moles or other animals that they have a, a claw that they can dig themselves into the ground so they are called fossorial animals but i i thought that was even a little bit too complicated so i just like the word fossora both how to say it but also in icelandic foss is waterfall so it is a very sort of positive word and very sort of open you know as sonically you know how to say it you know Great. i didn't know all the meanings of the this word so it uh, was the first song you written for the album, the, the song for Sora? No, it was actually the last song. Uh, usually the first two years when I'm writing uh, music, it's uh, I'm just more um, free and I just do whatever I want to do. I'm not trying to be so conceptual. I'm just sort of seeing what's in there. And then it usually after two years, I sit down and maybe listen to everything I made in in one go and then I pretend I'm someone else and I try to figure out like oh oh okay this is this kind of album and then I will work uh, to try to make it cohesive um, and then actually last song I, I, I finished singing and writing the lyrics for was for Sora and because I felt uh, the album needed a title track and also the lyrics to have explain this whole theme about the mushrooms to have the language of uh, funky and mycelium and everything to have that also on the album, you know. You can also talk about uh, the different kinds of bass on this album. Uh, six bass clarinets on the song Aeropos. How was working on bass on this album specifically? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was like a, a, a fun game to try to uh, arrange for like six uh, bass clarinets and to really um, make rhythms and patterns. And also Atopos is a song where I was trying to take it as far as I could to make it percussive and rhythmic and more sort of masculine. And then other songs like Victimhood, where I was trying to be more soft and gentle and more melancholic or sad. And then maybe songs like uh, Funkal City or, or um, Fosora, where I was trying to be more happy or more playful. So I wanted to try to get several um, colors and, and uh, I was trying to get as many different textures from bass clarinets as possible. And we went to my cabin here in the mountains in Iceland and in the winter in COVID and rehearsed a few times so I could experiment with different octaves and different like to learn um, how you know what worked better you know what was the stuff that worked best you know and also the your visual art on your song is re really important to you you say like your light curve is like homemade tarot cards for this specific album how was working on the art cover of Osora yes I I usually know sort of the color palette and then the overall theme. And then it's like solving a murder mystery uh, to sort of uh, figure out. I knew the position I should be on the cover, like that I should be crouching because this gives like the body more like earth connection. Uh, and also my hair would be like mycelium hair, like the nerve system going into the air. Uh, and yeah, and 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 it's interesting. Once once we have uh, different uh, clues like this, we experiment. And I was working in 
in Iceland, of course. So I uh, worked this time around with uh, just the Icelandic team of people, Icelandic photographer called Vedarlogi, and uh, also um, James Murray, who I worked with for 13 years. Uh, he's like my visual collaborator. He lives in Iceland now, has uh, lived for many years. So uh, it was uh, it was sort of like my Icelandic team that we did. Uh, we worked on the visuals together. It is beautiful. And talking again about the, the first track, Adopus, it's a Greek word, right? And it means strange or out of place. Yeah, I think I was reading a book by a uh, French philosopher, Roland Barthes, and he explains this word, Atopos, as the other, or it's actually, I was reading a lot about it online, and <laughs> what most people agree with, that it is very, very difficult to explain the meaning of Atopos, but the person who does it best is Roland Barthes, but it takes him three pages to describe it. So I thought that was quite funny, and but I think the meaning that I took out of it was uh, was both on a political and personal level when you have the other and you have a choice. Are you going to see what you have in common with the other or are you going to see what what how you are different to the other? So it's a choice. Um, and I, I was writing the song while uh, Trump was still a president and before the election second election that he lost in uh well maybe not but that's another story um so i think i was very interested in how in all around the world um there is a bigger gap between left and right in politics and maybe also between men and women or in couples so on a personal level the lyric is about you know are we gonna look at as a couple, are we going to look at what we have in common and focus on this? Or are we start going to start talking about what, where we are different, you know? And it's a choice, like which way you want to go. Uh, and, uh, and just being aware of that it is a choice, you know? And for me, of course, I, like everyone, I'm most interested in environmental things. And for the left and right to do something about the environment, we have to uh, forget about the differences and just work together as a group. In the same way we did in the pandemic, you know, we could, I think humankind can work in a very dramatic way. All governments can be very quick um, if they, um, if there is an emergency uh, like in the pandemic and make big changes and maybe I'm secretly hoping that well not secretly maybe well I am hoping <laughs> that uh, that governments uh, work as quickly in the environmental problems as they did in the pandemic and rather look at each other and just see more uh, w what we share rather than looking at the differences between each other in politics yeah it's just answer my what was going to be my next question because of the verse are these not just excuse that you not connect or these things are re re really relevant or unity is stronger than us is exactly about as you are talking about right yeah yes i was trying to find words to express this in talking about the second track of you you just release it uh what kind of love and what means this song for you Ovil, Ovil, yes um Yes, I think for me, uh, when I wrote Atopos and Ovio, I kind of wrote them around the same time. And they were almost like uh, yin and yang, or, or like one feminine, one masculine of the same idea. Uh, Ovio is more feminine or sensual, erotic, uh, more about feminine open love, where you are seeing what you have in common and wanting to protect that and willing to uh, work out shadows or, 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 or problems uh, to protect ideal love 
So yeah, Oville is, is a love song, a uh, very much romantic love song about uh, like a meditation, how to keep yourself open to that. And do you have a favorite track on the album? <laughs> no, I, I never have that. Um, I think for me, I like the diversity of the songs. I When I have playlists in my own home, the different music I listen to, it is uh, slow songs and fast songs and happy songs and sad songs. And I like all kinds of songs, you know, contemporary classical and pop songs and and I like I like music to give me all kind of different things. So um, I hope uh, I hope my album carries the same diversity for other people. And the, the sixth track, sorry my accent. I hope I can say it right. Fargo de El y Fordians. I say it right. One more time. Fargo de El y Fordians. The number oh, six. <laughs> you are very brave. I think you are the only <laughs> journalist that tried to say this. Sorry, get- my accent. No, you get five stars. Um, Icelandic is very difficult. Uh, it's Fagur uh, uh, uh Yes, it's. Uh, I was experimenting singing several folk songs in Icelandic, and and I think this song kind of worked best. I'm not sure exactly. I think it was more like a musical decision. Uh, also, I felt the album needed something like this especially after the two songs about my mother and somehow to have this uh, almost like a like a sorbet that clears the palate straight after uh, also it's good you know the the poem is written by this uh, 17th century poet called Lautra Björk um, who um, she was quite a feisty woman so I think it, it sort of uh, seemed to be everything to be right about it. Also, in the the lyric, it, it's I don't know. You you can actually Google it. I did see it online. Somebody has translated it. Um, it is like a very strange joke. The lyric it's um it's very Icelandic sense of humor. It uh, it's very like sort of dark sense of humor, making uh, fun of the East Icelandic winter. Uh, so I, I kind of liked it. It's kind of, and also it's quite short. So it's almost like a haiku poem or something, which uh, I like. I want to talk to you about Brazil. What are your memories from Brazil? You've been here before. Yeah, I love it so much. It's one of my favorite countries to be in. I obviously love the music and and uh, I DJ a lot of beats uh, from Brazil from last few years. Um, it's very exciting uh, period, and uh, I uh, what I remember. I have, I have many memories. I was mostly in Rio de Janeiro, like on the beach. Sorry, it's very typical, but I I loved that, and I also went to this tropical island. I was invited to, which was uh, amazing. I also spent maybe the longest I've been in Brazil was in. Um, in uh, January 2004, where I spent a whole month in um, Salvador, where they were preparing for the carnival. So I was listening to all the rhythms and and to the people uh, preparing, um, because each god has a different rhythm. So this was very exciting for me with, with uh, to, uh, you know, the more Afro-Caribbean uh, side of carnival. Um, that I was, it was very uh, exciting time for me. And you are coming again, Primavera Sound, São Paulo Festival. We are headlining with Arctic Monkeys. What what we can expect for your show, your performance here? I'm I'm doing a different thing what I normally do in festivals. I'm uh, bringing, um, as you know, I'm I'm actually not bringing. I am performing with a local Brazilian orchestra. And a collection of my songs, uh, so it's it's uh, similar to the show I did in uh, on uh, live streamed a, a, um, a year ago in Iceland. So it's actually uh, I have uh, I will have no visuals, so it's more uh, what do you say unplugged, <laughs> uh, and it's sort of the first time I bring this to South America. So I'm I'm quite excited about it. 
I'm hoping we are still trying to get cornucopia to South America, uh, which is um, which is Utopia and Fosora, which is more like a digital theater, which is, has a lot of lot of lot of visuals and musicians. And um, we I, we are still working on this as this is very uh, complicated to bring, uh, especially after COVID. Uh, I think this. Uh, yeah, it's a long story, so I cannot promise it, but we will do our best. But that would, of course, be my favorite if we would also bring Cornucopia to Brazil. That's great. And we're running out of time. My last question would be about your podcast. How has been talking about your albums uh, again, the feeling of talking about it? And how has been the experience of having a podcast now? Yes, I did enjoy it. It was um I was approached by several people to either do book like autobiography or to do like a documentary film. And for me, it was just not right. Or maybe I will do it when I'm, you know, 90 year old or something, you know. But I did notice uh, this good thing that happens when you're around 50 is your brain changes and suddenly you don't see your life in a linear way, but your brain starts to throw out all the stuff you don't need. And so I, th to make room for more music and more stuff, uh, more experiences. So I, I decided to do this as a conversation to friends uh, before I would forget it all. So I am happy that it's there. So, so I don't forget everything. I think for me, like uh, when I see documentary about musicians or autobiography, like books, it's everything is about trying to make the musician into this superhero or like a icon or something. And I find this very boring. I think uh, I wanted rather to talk to my friends. So it's more like a conversation and you, and it's more about our mutual love for, of music or, or lyrics. Uh, so it's, it's us talking about something that we love rather than uh, somebody admiring an icon or something, which I think is more 20th century. It's more sort of, it's dead. I don't think it, it survives anymore. I, that, I think that's why one of the reasons why podcasts are so huge is it's it's dethroning the icons or it's it's taking people away from hierarchy or, or pedestals and bringing people or down to the ground with on the same level as human beings and um and and i prefer this uh, format perfect last thing i want to ask we invite our fans to be on primavera sound here in sao paulo oh i'm just looking forward to seeing everyone and uh i'll be there with local brazilian strings singing a collection of all my songs and i i do hope you will enjoy it Perfect. Thank you so much, Bjork. I really appreciate it. Thank you for our time, the interview. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you in Brazil soon. Thank you. 89, a Rádio Rock.